Spoopathon has begun. Who doesn't love a little unboxing book haul extravaganza? Might get myself a little glass of wine. Oh my god, I feel like I just sliced the book. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. For today's video we are starting another reading vlog and this time we are doing a weekend reading vlog because today is Friday the 1st of October which means Spoopathon has begun. <laughs> if you don't know, I am a team captain for the Spoopathon, which is a spooky readathon hosted by Spoopy Hall. I will of course leave all the information to it down below, but I am the team captain for Ghouls Just Wanna Have Fun, or Ghouls for short. I am so excited to be taking part in this readathon. I'm so excited to be a team captain for this readathon. I am so excited to read all the spooky books this month. So of course, because it is kicking off today, I thought I'd do a weekend reading vlog over Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and try and get off to a good start. I definitely I definitely want to finish one book this weekend and possibly start a second, even finish a second as well. But the first book that I have on my TBR for Spoopathon is Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. This one is actually a buddy read with Tabitha and the whole reason we're reading this is because it is Matthew Grey Goobler's favourite book. We don't know who Matthew Grey Goobler is, he plays Spencer Reed on the programme Criminal Minds which is Tabitha's all-time favourite TV show and is quickly becoming mine as well because she has forced me to watch it and I am obsessed. And the best character in it is Spencer Reed and the actor in real life, this is his favourite book. And it is a spooky Halloween -y book so perfect for the readathon. This one will fulfil the prompt gifted to you but it'll also get me some extra points for buddy read and recommended to you as well. Recommended to you both by Tabitha and Matthew Gregobler as well. So altogether this one should get me 125 points so not a bad start to the readathon at all. This one basically follows two teenage boys who go to this mysterious sinister carnival around the time of Halloween and weird and wonderful magical things happen happen while well, they are there. That is all I really know about this one but it is supposed to be such a good spooky Halloween-y book so I am so excited to get started to this one. It is like only about 260 pages so I'm hoping to read this one pretty fast. If I manage to finish this one this weekend I will then go on to my next book which is Blood Orange by Harriet Tice and this one will fulfill the prompt autumnal cover because it's sort of like reddy orangey colours so autumnal colours. This one will only get me 25 points. It is only to fulfill that prompt to get me onto the next one. There's no bonus points for this one, but that's fine. It'll allow me to move on. I just really struggled to find a book with an autumnal cover. So this is the one. But my priority obviously for this weekend is this one. And if I do get it finished, I will move on to Blood Orange as well. I am currently on the opening reading sprints for Spoopathon on Spoops' channel. We are just doing our first sprint just now, but I thought I'd come on here and quickly introduce the vlog. So I'm gonna get myself comfy just now and get reading in and try and get a good chunk of this one read tonight. guys so the sprints have just ended don't mind me just lying here on this sofa on the massive dog I needed to be comfy and I'm really tired but I managed to read 110 pages I believe of Something Wicked This Way Comes. I've read the first part which was called Arrivals I believe so I'm just about to start the second part which is called Pursuits. This book is such a weird one like I did not know before starting it that Ray Bradbury has a very unique writing style which partly he is very famous for but I did not know this and when I first started reading it I had absolutely no clue what the man was talking about. I was reading it and I was like I don't know what's going on this seems like something like a book I maybe would have studied at uni like I felt like 
I didn't know what he was trying to say but he was probably saying a lot <laughs> with his words if you properly analysed it and at first I was really worried because I was thinking this is too much for me like I'm not going to enjoy this I'm not going to be able to get into it I'm not going to be able to understand it but within about 50 pages or so you start to sort of get used to him and the way he writes and it all becomes a lot clearer so now reading it I know I completely understand what he's talking about but to begin with I just had no clue and it's really weird that way it's almost like something's clicked and I can like trans his writing but he uses a lot of imagery and a lot of metaphors and sometimes when he's using a metaphor to describe something it's almost difficult to work out what the original thing is that he's describing because he's just using a metaphor if that makes sense I don't know it was really confusing at first and I had no idea but now I'm really getting into it it's very atmospheric because the writing itself is so strange and so weird it makes the whole atmosphere very weird the plot is very weird <laughs> it's all it's a bit spooky a bit freaky obviously we're following these two 14 year old boys i believe will and jim and this carnival shows up in their town on the 24th of october and it seems like an ordinary carnival during the day to most people but will and jim keep finding out these weird things about it and they have been like hiding in the shadows and seeing things that they probably weren't supposed to see and it's all a bit creepy and freaky and I feel like this has probably been an inspiration for a lot of other books and films as well. Like there's been a few scenes already that have really reminded me of other books, other films, both horror and otherwise. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. I have absolutely no idea where it's going. The whole thing is just very sort of like darkly atmospheric and the writing is quite poetic once you get to grips with his writing style. But it's not like anything I've ever read before. I do want to read more of his writing after this I think but I think I'll need a little bit of a break first because it uses your brain a little bit more than others. <laughs> So I'm actually quite happy that I'll be moving on to just a normal thriller after this. I think that'll be a good little palate cleanser <laughs> after the weirdness of this. Uh, but yeah, really enjoying it. I think I'm going to get myself ready for bed just now, take my makeup off and all that good stuff. And then I may well read some more of this in bed. I'm not sure, but I'll probably update you tomorrow. Hey guys, happy Saturday. So I'm actually just getting ready to film a video, but that video is my Scoopathon TBR. And most of the books for that TBR are in these boxes. So I thought I would just do a quick unboxing for you guys. Obviously, if you watch my Come Book Shopping With Me for Spooky Books video that was the last video on my channel, you will already know what is in here because I obviously bought all of those in that video in order to put on my Spooky Fall TBR, but who doesn't love a little unboxing book haul extravaganza? So we're going to open these just now. First of all, I've got this big one here that I cannot work out. Oh, there we go. This is how we open it. So, oh my god. There we go. So I have two books in here. I have Fear Street The Beginning by R.L. Stein, which is actually a lot chunkier than I realised. How many pages is in this? Oh my god, it's over 500 pages. Great. <laughs> Did not realise that. It's fine though, because I do think it'll be quite a quick read and it's fairly big font, so hopefully that'll be fine. And the other one I have in here is Mina and the Undead by Amy McCall. This is one of the ones I am most excited about and oh my god, I just flipped it open and realised how beautiful it is inside. <gasps> Look at this. Oh my god, I'm even more excited now. Yeah, I can't wait to read it. Okay, and then this second big box, which I may need, I'm gonna need some sort of utensil to open, BRB. Let's just... Oh my god, I feel like I just sliced the book. So in here... First of all, we have Tomi by Junji Ito. This is going to be my first Junji Ito and I am so excited to read it. I think it's like the third or fourth book on my TBR for the month so it won't be too long before I get to read this and 
you guys, I just know I'm gonna love Junji Ito stuff. I just know it. Next up we have Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. This one sounds so good because it's a proper haunted house book and I don't think I've ever actually read a haunted house like based book before. I suppose Midnight Man when I read that thriller was kind of haunted housey but we all know how I felt about that book. So yeah, really excited to get around to this one. And finally, oh my god, it's so beautiful. We have Fangs by Sarah Anderson. A love story between a vampire and a werewolf. What more could you want? Oh my god, it just looks so good. There we go. So that's my little mini spooky book unboxing haul thing. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get ready and film my Spoopathon TBR now. I need to film that, edit it and get it uploaded. Get everything all sorted before I do any more reading. So, I will get back to you when I've managed to read some more of Something Wicked This Way Comes. It is actually Sunday now. It has been a little bit of a slower weekend for me purely because my time of the month has just started and at the beginning I am always very sort of tired, drowsy and brain foggy and sometimes concentrating on a book is something that's quite difficult at, that, at those first couple of days. And let me tell you Ray Bradbury is definitely one that is difficult to concentrate on if you do not have the brain capacity. <laughs> But I have just finished Something Wicked This Way Comes and I'm gonna give this one four stars. I actually ended up really, really enjoying it. Obviously, I said to begin with it was quite confusing and the writing style is quite challenging. But once you sort of break through that, you're totally pulled into this world. Like it is so atmospheric, so sort of poetically written. And I feel like I could read this a million times and every single time I'll be able to take something new from it and discover something new within the writing because it's quite challenging and because it's quite poetic. Each time you read it I think you could sort of find something else in his writing and I know that if I was to analyse this properly like for uni or something there is so much that could be taken from this book. Like it is quite complex but also I feel like it's one of those books that you could just read it purely for the plot and for the main ideas or you can challenge yourself and go deeper into it and work out everything that he's trying to say. But in itself, just for the plot, is good enough. The whole like atmosphere is just really sort of disturbing and creepy the whole way through. And there are some scenes in this that are really quite, quite graphic and quite frightening. And it's just one of those books that really sort of gets under your skin, even when there's not anything particularly frightening happening. The whole atmosphere is just quite eerie and creepy and I really enjoyed a lot of the sort of discussions in this about morality and about ageing and there is like the main sort of theme in this book is about the battle between good and evil and what makes someone good and what makes someone evil and that whole idea was just really interesting to read about and I think there's so much that could be said for it and there's so much that can be found in this book probably more than I've picked up the first time about that. Yeah just a very dark read but with some really important and poignant moments and discussions in it as well. So yeah, four stars, thoroughly enjoyed it. Very Halloween-y so be very happy that I've read it in October as my first Spoopathon read. I think it's perfect for that. I am now, I don't know, I think I might actually go straight on to Blood Orange. I feel like I'm in a reading mood now so I might just continue to sit here and I don't know if it's just me but look at the app viewfinder right now the lighting has gone really strange and it's making me sort of glow I feel like I look really angelic right now I don't 
don't know if that is actually what it looks like on screen. This bit may get cut out, but looking at it right now, I'm like glowing and it's a little bit weird. But anyway, I think I might get started on Blood Orange just now. I'm actually quite in the mood for just a good thriller. Obviously, this one, like I said, was a bit more challenging and a bit more complex. Um, it took a little bit more brain work to read. So I feel like we did just a really ordinary thriller. Usually the writing in that is quite simple and that should be able to, I should be able to just sort of almost switch off a little bit, just get lost in that. Hopefully it'll be a good, engaging, compelling read. I have heard some good things about it since I posted my spoopy on TBR last night. I've had a few people comment in saying they really enjoyed Blood Orange. So fingers crossed that's going to be the case. I do know it is a very controversial book. I feel like it's a love or hate kind of book. Some people just, just did not get on with it at all but some people really loved it. I don't think I'm expecting too much from it to be perfectly honest but I'm just hoping that it's a fast read and an enjoyable one. We know what I'm like with fillers. I do feel like I'm quite picky with my fillers and there are certain things that I want from a filler and if they don't give me that I'm not happy. So you know, we shall see how I feel. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get comfy just now. Might get myself a little glass of wine and start Blood Orange. So please excuse the state of me right now. I'm just coming in with a very quick update because I have a very busy day of uni work today. It is now Monday but I thought I'd just come in and give you a little bit of an update. So I have been reading Blood Orange and I've managed to get to page 73 of this one so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'm reading it very fast. It's a very it's exactly what I wanted after Something Wicked This Way comes, which I said was a bit more dense and challenging to read, whereas this one is very simple language, very easy to read nice and fast. So far, we're following the character of Alison, who is a lawyer who doesn't seem to have the best home life. She has her husband and their daughter, Matilda. And their relationship is definitely on the rocks. At the moment, it's kind of difficult to tell whose fault that is. There is one side of it that seems like he is very controlling, very manipulative, possibly emotionally abusive. But then there's also some hints at possibly Alison not being a very good person and her maybe causing his anger now and the way he treats her now has been because of her. There's already issues about her drinking and her maybe remembering things differently to how they actually happened, which kind of reminds me of The Girl on the Train and also creates an unreliable narrator, which we know I love. And then Alison at work is also having an affair with a hotshot lawyer who treats her like absolute dart, but she goes back for the sex mostly. And I think she hopes that he may be nice to her and be loving and caring, but he never seems to be. He just wants what he wants and then he will kick her to the curb, but she keeps going back. So at the moment, I feel like there's potential for this one to make some really good comments, but there's also potential for it to just really anger me. At the moment, it's just hugely frustrating because no one is really hugely likeable. And I'm not going to be one of those people who says I can't, I can't read a book without likeable characters because I can. I can find it really interesting if characters are, characters are very unlikable and questions of morality and good and bad. I can find that really interesting but at the moment everyone is just irritating me and the way the men are treating Alison is just making me so angry. So if that can all be challenged and worked with properly within this book, I think I will really like it. But if it's not properly challenged, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. And Alison as a character, I can't work her out. Like I can't work out if I feel sorry for her and she's being abused, emotionally abused by both of these men or if she's the one in the wrong, if she's remembering things wrong, if she 
is a bad person. I don't know, it's all a little bit confused at the moment. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it, but I do know that I'm intrigued and I really want to see where this goes. Obviously, another big part of the story is Alison being a lawyer and she's working on her first murder case with Patrick, the man that she's having the affair with which is obviously not great because they're going to be in close contact all the time, but they're working on a murder case where a young woman is being put on trial for the murder of her husband. But we have already found out that she doesn't remember the night. Like she wants to plead guilty, but she was so drunk that she sort of came to in front of him with blood all over and blood all over him and no memory of what happened in between. So we don't actually know if she did it or not. So obviously we're going to find out more about that case while we also find out more about Alison and her relationships. So yeah so far it's intriguing it's sort of like darkly seductive lots of sex lots of emotional issues so yeah really enjoying it as i said i'm on page 73 so i'm hoping to get a lot more of this read later on today but right now i really need to go and do as much uni work as i possibly can because <laughs> i underestimated how much work we would have to do this week i think because usually this course you would be in class nine till five monday to friday but because we can't do that they're giving us all the reading and all the activities to do online so they sort of throw it all at us at the beginning of the week and it's up to you to independently independently study manage your time make sure you're giving yourself blocks for each module so yeah I'm gonna go ahead get on this little desk over here and try and work on as much of my current module as I possibly can I'm actually just coming on here to finish off this vlog. I haven't really done too much more reading since we last spoke. I am on page 108 of Blood Orange. So I read my first 100 pages and I'm now kicking myself for I think the way that I spoke about this last time because now it's very clear that her husband is very manipulative and very emotionally abusive and Although I should have got that from the start, it has gotten so much worse in the next however many pages I've read and he is just horrible and she is all so clearly stuck in this emotionally abusive relationship that she's probably been in since she was young. Like I think I'm assuming he was always like this and she thinks this is what's normal and doesn't realise like how abusive he is. Honestly, like she can't do anything right. It's just constant criticism, it's constant like belittling, he won't let her do things she wants to do she has to get out of the house so he can have special boy meetings with his male friends even though she's the one that pays all the bills and owns the house and everything and yeah it's just all really fucked up and he's horrible and I hate him and also the guy that she's having the affair with it's also horrible and we hate him too I'm assuming Harriet Tice does not like men because they're all awful in this but yeah I am interested to see where this goes I think there are parallels in her case with this young woman that is accused of murdering her husband. I think he was also quite a manipulative husband. We've already learned some things that are really, really wrong and really bad. So I don't know if she's maybe gonna learn more about herself and her own relationship through that and realize how bad hers is. I don't know. Obviously we've still got her problems with her drinking and her trying to come to terms with that. And it is still making her a bit of an unreliable narrator because you're still kind of questioning the things that she's saying and if she's telling the whole truth and if she's remembering everything right. But it is really interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing where this one goes. That's all I can really say at the moment. Obviously I'm only like a third of the way through. So there's a whole load more stuff to come that is basically just setting the scene and building all the characters up. But I am enjoying it. I am hoping to, I don't know if enjoy is the word. I'm intrigued by it and I'm hoping to like it by the end. <laughs> but that is it for this weekend reading vlog. I am not sure at the moment if there will be a weekly reading vlog next week or not, purely because I am so busy with uni work. Like there is so much to do and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get round to weekly reading vlog this week. 
I don't know. I will have some sort of video for you next week. It just might not be a weekly video vlog. <laughs> but for now, as always, if you did enjoy this video, then do please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more bookish content from me. Comment down below with any of your thoughts and feelings. I do reply to every single comment. I love you all and I will see you in my next one.